anything else, Barbara Jordan was a teacher. She would be particularly delighted that this is an occasion that is the result of students' actions. The first year we were in Orange Jackets. The second year we established a smaller committee outside the Orange Jackets called the Barbara Jordan Statue Committee. So I came to the first meeting and I was like, wow, you know, help bring a, the first female statue to campus. This is a great accomplishment. It's something I have to be a part of. The hardest thing was just making sure that we represented her well. Because there's a lot of facets to Barbara Jordan, her oratory skills, her joy of teaching. How do you, how do you convey all of that? I believe that anyone that, you know, hears Barbara Jordan speaks is like empowered by the things that she's saying. Earlier today, we heard the beginning of the preamble to the Constitution of the United States. We the people. It's a very eloquent beginning. But when that document was completed on the 17th of September in 1787, I was not included in that we the people. I felt somehow for many years that George Washington and Alexander Hamilton just left me out by mistake. But through the process of amendment, interpretation, and court decision, I have finally been included in We the People. My faith in the Constitution is whole, it is complete, it is total. And I am not going to sit here and be an idle spectator to the diminution, the subversion, the destruction of the Constitution. I think about all the different ways I identify in the world now, Barbara Jordan reflects that. And hopefully as others come and see the statue, uh, they feel that same presence and they feel that same identity with her. It really captured, embodied everything she was as a person. And we thought Bruce did that and did it well. I'd, I'd read so much about her, of course, anyway. And I thought that pose was so, so apropos to her personality. Barbara and I had been friends for over 25 years. We were colleagues in the Texas Senate, and she came to the Senate as the first uh, African-American uh, woman. And there were many people who were in the Senate at that time that were very prejudiced, and they would refer to her in uncomplimentary terms. But at the end of that first session, uh, she was elected the outstanding freshman senator. And I guess she got the bug by earlier working in Democratic uh, campaigns um, and being encouraged because there were others who saw this uh, ability in her. She then was later the first African-American woman from the South to be elected to the United States Congress. The Honorable Barbara Jordan, Democrat of Houston, Texas. I, I was 15 when I first heard Barbara Jordan. After I heard Jordan give this amazing speech at the Democratic National Convention, I was so moved I wrote her a letter. It was 144 years ago that members of the Democratic Party first met in convention to select a presidential candidate. And our meeting this week is a continuation of that tradition. But there is something different about tonight. There is something special about tonight. What is different? What is special? I, Barbara Jordan, am a keynote speaker. Despite the fact that I'm sure she got thousands and thousands of letters from all over the country, she wrote back to me and she talked about how important it was to her to hear from people all over the country, including, you know, this skinny white kid from upstate New York. What was wonderful about Professor Jordan was she really valued teaching and she was intimidating but still very approachable and she placed a huge value on training future leaders in public affairs. I had never seen an African American and an African American female for that matter on the television in such an important role. I'll never forget that day and what it did to me in choosing what I wanted to do and where I wanted to be. Barbara Jordan represented to me an outstanding American citizen who restored my faith in government and democracy. She simply sought justice for all, justicia para todos, 
Barbara Jordan is one of our own. Her goal in the course was to, that we would leave and know our core values. That's what I want people to say about me, you know. Um, how did I live my life? What did I believe in? Toward the end of her life, uh, I was very much involved. I went out to the hospital when she had pneumonia in December before she died in the next January. And I was there when her doctor came to tell her that uh, she would probably not live but just a few more weeks. She wanted me to promise as dean of the LBJ school that I would not cancel her class, which was going to start the 20th of January, because she fully expected to be back there to teach it. And of course, she died on the 16th. I've always felt that as long as you are alive, you should be doing something that makes a difference. You don't have to do big, gigantic things. Just do things incrementally. One way or the other, I want to make an incremental difference. And I think that's something everybody can do. And um, that's, that's a core value. If you went to her gravestone out in the state cemetery, on the back side of it is only one word, and that word is teacher, because what she wanted to be remembered as was a teacher.